Uh, myself and Terry here in front, uh, we own Blue Pair Gallery and are supported by our great staff who are right behind me here. Uh, we have Emma here, we have Tim here, and we have Tina over here. And Kim, who's not here, is here in spirit. Kim wrote a wonderful set of articles. Wasn't so that great? I thought it was wonderful. Hey, I read yeah. them together today. So Enjoyed your uh, interviews with Kit. So I, I want to thank all the staff for having to put this on, but most importantly for our honored guests who are here with us via Zoom, which is always complicated, uh, through California, the McCall family. So a round of applause. Yeah, it's, a, it's a rare day when you have a family of talented people work together every day, go ahead and do it for 20, 30 years plus, and enjoy the heck out of each other. And we're blessed to have this great artwork around us being shown here in Wisconsin. When we first came out three years ago and wanted to bring work to the Midwest, um, I felt honored that we had the McClaw family here in the Midwest. We did. And I look forward tonight to hear from you guys and to share questions and answers with uh, some of our clients here who just love your work. So with that, a round of applause. <laughs> I'll let Dan, John, and Danny carry forward from here. Well, again, Alan, we'd like to thank you and all the staff and the people that have um, been going to endure this uh, discussion. Um, we, we feel uh, it's been a real honor to uh, be part of the gallery. And uh, we're looking forward to um, any questions or any uh, things that you want to hear from us on our side of it. Uh, I'm sure that there are, no matter what kind of question, uh, it's valuable for us. And we'd love to answer them. I mean, that's, uh, uh, but again, thank you for, for coming. Thanks, everyone. We have the most important member joining us right now behind you. <laughs> that's a studio hound. Oh, that's Ocho. Yeah, he's a yeah. black hound one. And he's a. Uh, no studio is complete without him. Yeah, that. he's here all the time with us, encouraging us and uh, kind of criticizing more than he should. But uh, he's a valuable <laughs> asset to the, to the studio. We, we've been in this studio, uh, it was a ballet company owned the building and we bought the building in 1998. And, um, you know, beautiful hardwood floors will now, like I said in our little article, is covered with paint. But it's been a, a fantastic um, journey that I can work with my two sons and um, none of us were still talking together. <laughs> we've learned. We've learned uh, there was a big transformation, though, from all the mirrors from the ballet studio, and um, just a lot of renovation that went into making the studio ours and and a place. I'm glad you left your tutu home, though. Say that again. Sorry. I said I'm glad you left your tutu home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just today, though. This is Thursday. This is Thursday. <laughs> Thursday is off. <laughs> Usually we paint in our two tubes, but. <laughs> well, we had done initially. Hold on. We, we, we had a studio before and we got kicked out of it. And we're telling about how we got this place. Wow. Well, I was looking for a building to lease. And. Uh, the realtor called me and said, I have a building for sale. And she said, are you interested? It was a formerly Lawrence and Ballet, which uh, the premier ballerina in New York used to train here. And um, so I came down, there was another person looking uh, to buy the building also. And when I saw it, it was all, all the walls were mirrored and the hardwood floors were beautiful. It's a floated floor. There's two hardwood floors, one uh, underneath this, and this is um, a, a kind of a cushion 
hardwood floor for the, the ballerinas. And so I came in and said, yeah, I'll take it. And so the other person that wanted the building was, was one an inspection and all this. And I just said, yeah, I saw the potential of it. It's like a New York loft. Yeah. Amazing. Thousand square feet of space. And um, we pretty much filled that and we have that much in a so we need another building. Attic, <laughs> so we need another, uh, uh, another building. But so that that began uh, this journey at this location, and you know to be so privileged to have my two sons, which are which are who I draw from continually. Uh, so it's a great great environment. I couldn't. I couldn't be more pleased, or I couldn't be luckier than to uh, to have what I have. So I, all of us, uh, yeah. Well, well, it's a benefit we all get along. So <laughs> it, yeah. it's it's life and art really intersect each other, and it's a great place to come and create and just uh, you know. I surf. With, I surf with my brother almost every day. And then we hang out on the weekends together and make sure the other one's not going to the studio to paint. So. <laughs> I know. You know, every artist needs an environment that he can be free of judgment. And um, I think within our environment, it's always the sense of encouragement to push farther, to take a chance, to be curious. All those things are part of every day that are that are essential for uh, an artist to develop. And I think so many artists don't have that. So I'm, I feel really, uh, really privileged. And I know John and Danny do too. Uh, uh, it's a symbiotic so relationship. And that, that type of relationship also, the best relationships for an artist is that type of relationship that we have with galleries. That there's, they know us kind of, on a personal basis, why we paint what we do and why we um, why we go through this every day, and it, it's uh, and it's not everything is in uh, roses and ice cream, you know. It's uh, much of art is frustration and the ability to live with frustration because it's the great motivator, you know. It forces us beyond the, the familiar, the safe, and predictable. And I think a lot of artists don't have the encouragement of somebody next to them push them past that frustration to encourage them to uh, st step on the edge a little bit. So we're, we're really extremely lucky to have. And I think too, like you guys give us a platform to, to, to share, our, share our ideas with everyone. Yeah. It's a huge thing. Yeah. I think too, what we share is a passion for creativity and compassion. I think we're all compassionate where, you know, we understand how lucky we are to be here in this environment. And not everybody is this lucky. So um, we're real fortunate to just be in this place and be able to create. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he, I think, I think the passion, passion is about the ability to withstand the flame, the fire, the, the frustration in order to get to the other side. You know, Pablo Neruda, Neruda said a, uh, a great thing, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, it, if you ha hold your flame, your hand in the flame long enough, the flower will blossom. And that's a lot about what art's about is to, it's not anymore about, initially it was about um, depicting a subject that was pleasing. I'd find a beautiful model and try to uh, skillfully render her or him or what, or find a beautiful landscape. But it's more about um, this internal um, journey of painting something that feels right to you. And I think a lot of people shy away from certain types of art that, that deviate from the literal um, because they don't, they can't um, explain it. And I think a lot of art has to just be felt. You don't have to define it or explain it. It doesn't have to be a story. 
or lead you down an intended uh, destination. I think the value of a lot of art is in the mystery of it, that you interpret things into it. It's, and that type of art can change every day. You see something different in it. And so we want that in our art too, as we're painting. We that want excitement. To, the excitement as we're painting, the surprise, the big chance. Of the, and, and hopefully you can see that in our art, that it's more symbolic than it is representational of a pretty person on the beach running with a kite. I mean, I, I, I don't deny that type of thing for certain people need to have everything defined for them, the, the story to be told. But for us, as, as I think that it's about the mystery and the symbolism that we put into our art that makes it, um, then when you discover something in that art, it makes it your own. So um, that's kind of- I almost think it's like writing a letter and I get to pass it on to you. And then hopefully it gets passed on down the line of uh, you know, uh -huh. someone's interpretation of it. Yeah, I, I like the fact like it's like your conscious and your subconscious are colliding with each other. And all of a sudden, like you have this aha moment and it's kind of like, it's exciting, you know? It's like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, I'm getting there. I'm feeling it. I, uh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it yeah. all starts to kind of make sense, but it takes time. I mean, we're so in, intimate with our pieces. We spend so much time with them that we, we realize these little nuances um, where people may not even see those, you know? So it, I think getting to it sometimes takes time. So you just have to allow yourself that time, you know? I think too, we get to deal with like risk every day where most people don't get that. Like we get to just destroy things and find things, just risk things. Yeah, yeah. it's really exciting to Every painting is offering you the challenge to go beyond the safe, the predictable, and the familiar. It's, it's always there in each painting. You know, take a chance. Did I push you far enough? Yeah. Did I do it? You know, it's uh, always, it's a, there's always know, something left. Right. There's always a hundred voices talking to you, trying to push you past that uh, safe to meet the expectations of somebody else or what always is, what has already been established as great art. And you've got, you've got to find that true north within you and you, you don't know it till it, you, till something grabs you at your gut level and says, this feels good to me. Um, art, is, art is different for every artist. Every artist has to search in the direction that best represents them as an artist. And, so that's what makes art so beautiful is that there's a, there's a broad language of, of uh, how each artist interprets a subject or emotion or uh, direction. So it's a- uh, It's built on life experience and, and memories and, and, and things that sometimes are, are very deep and sometimes are right on the surface. They, they just need to be exposed. So it's kind of all there in the painting. Yeah. But it's not told. I mean, it's not. What am I looking for? I, I think every artist steps to the canvas. He's carrying this whole bag of his fears, his goals, his experiences, his failures, his, his successes, Everything. all within one moment he approaches the canvas. And, um, you know, I look at a lot of art and I look at a lot of instruction and um, I see that I, I always wanted to know what is the artist thinking when he's painting? You know, it's kind of you see him painting and um, you don't realize, you know, it's, it's like a duck you see just cruising over a lake, but underneath, you know, he's paddling like hell. And the artist is doing the same thing. Is it too bright? Is it too dull? Your mind's constantly. Is it, and you're searching for that thing that's really it's unknown to you until you hit it. So 
I mean, it, it's and it will never be fully answered. Yeah, it's never. That's what key frustration is the greatest driving source of creativity. That you want to find something new, something different. Um, that you have to, you know, the old saying: if you're not standing on the edge, you're taking up too much room. And uh, so, so it's it's an amazing, amazing career journey that an artist can take. And I extremely privileged. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's self-centered. It's, it's uh, <laughs> our wives are. You know, they have to be as important as the artists because they support you. They stand in our shadows. Um, most of my paintings are based on female figures symbolize humanity. And it's about validation, how we stand frozen waiting to be validated. And you can look at any of my work and that's what it's, this series of paintings, that's what it is about. Well, that sounds like a perfect time as a segue to see if there are questions that people want to ask from the audience. Uh, I will start with one myself first and then let everyone go forward. You know, one of the things you had said was that you could look at a painting and you'll set it aside and then you go back to it and then something will hit you in a way that a painting you may not have loved struck you in a way that's different and that you know art is that visual experience that constantly changes so could you describe some works that you might have looked at and started and said oh my god what am i doing with this all and of them and then all of a sudden you know voila out comes something that you love yeah i mean depending on the day it just you know you you, you think you hit it right on the head but the next day or even hours or days, years, even later, you, you, it's, it's not speaking to you in the same way. And it happens quite a bit, actually, you know, um, I think sometimes we were so close to what we're focusing on that we actually need to step back a little bit and put it aside and because sometimes you get enamored by the newness of a piece and you're like, oh, this is great. This is, you know, I, I like the direction. And then you realize, well, maybe it's, it's not as good as you thought it was. So uh, that was the thing jumps in and says, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I often come in thinking, you know, by the end of the night, I've convinced myself, yeah, this is a good Yeah, painting. you're convincing yourself all day. All day. This, this is a good painting. Painting. okay. Next. When I come in the morning, I think, oh, who came God. in and ruined this thing last <laughs> time? <laughs> We're our harshest critics. Yeah, I mean, it's that's frustration is what drives us. And I think also getting out and broadening your perception of what art has to offer. What, and bring you grow, you, you, grow. you grow constantly. I mean, it's every day you're growing. So it's, it's not to stay in that same stagnant. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, the problem is once you've reached that safe, familiar, and predictable part, it, it's hard to leave that because uh, because it might be financially success, uh, successful and uh, we have a tendency to stay a little bit too long in those areas in the safe, predictable, and familiar. But when you go out and you see somebody else that took a bigger chance, then you think, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I take a bigger chance? And it kind of gets you in the rear end, you know, to, to look a little harder, look a little broader, broaden your perceptions. You know, percent, our reality is just our perception of reality. You could be exhilarated flying in an airplane. I could be terrified. The event, the event is just the same. It's our perceptions are different. So as we broaden our perceptions, that rainy, gloomy, cold day can be beautiful reflections, can be uh, clean uh, smells, and. Uh, but you could also change your perceptions. Yeah. If yeah. you're aware. Yeah, and I think every situation yeah. offers you a choice of what perceptions uh, you want to perceives things with, you know, the rainy day or the, the gloomy rainy day or the 
reflect beautiful reflections, clean smells and beautiful perspective, but that's- um, It's every day is different. You might feel that that day is beautiful, but the next day you might have a down day. You might feel yeah. like it's, you know, exactly. so you're constantly riding these waves. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you come through the door where some days you're frustrated, your uh, your uh, self confidence is low. Other days you're aggressive, and I mean it's it's no different than anybody else. I mean, I don't think we have any more talent than anybody. It's just that we've we've uh, taken that um, that vision or that that desire and focused with it. You know, so we've developed it because of what we're trying to achieve. I, I think too, like there's, like sometimes you may not like something initially, but over time, like you, you come to like it. You, and whether it's a, a better understanding of it or whether maybe your aesthetics have grown, um, has changed, there, there's all different types of things that, that can occur, I think that, alter your perception yes yeah. and you, you just have to be willing to to acknowledge like you know oh I, i'm i'm for, for some reason i'm liking this a lot better you know sometimes you don't even know my taste sorry about that uh, the president keeps calling me annoying me. I think John's right. I think sometimes you just have to experience something enough that you start to appreciate that particular thing. It's developing a taste, and that broadens your perception. It changes your aesthetics, and uh, I think art is all about growth. You know, it's it, it's a uh, it's amazing thing to be part of. That there's such a you know creativity lays in uncertainty. If you allow that, the solution could be anything. You know, little kids have that that uh, pre association. They see a cow and they see an airplane. Well. A cow must fly, can be able to fly or talk, or a table can talk. But, and we lose that when we become grounded in reality. And as an artist, I think we want to we want to tap into those things that the solution can be anything. I think it's about that freedom as a child. You, you know that 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 Not curiosity of, of tying your shoes or whatever it is when you take focus in something. Yeah, that you're able to become engulfed with it. We're able to do that every day. Yeah, just to to dive into anything. Everything can be amazing if you see the beauty in it. I I remember um, going to New York and I was photographing. Uh, this was back a few years, and I was photographing. It's like 15 years. Probably. Yeah, maybe 25 years ago. Um, and I was photographing buildings and the shadows on buildings, and and uh, Danny was photographing figures walking down the street. And John was bigger, was photographing the cracks in the sidewalks, and all of a sudden, his perception broadened mine. And I think every day, as long as we turn, there's treasures everywhere for an artist and for for people if they see it's it's your focus and your perception if i say to you how many beautiful doorknobs did you see today well you didn't even though you passed by a hundred of them but then if you go and look at that if you brought if you, your if you focus changes if your focus too. changes on that it's there it's everywhere and so as an artist there's so much stimulus around us that uh, it's hard sometimes just even to do a painting because of all those influences. And I think the cool thing about our situation is we each have different focuses and it all of a sudden opens up new doorways for each one of us. Yeah. Exactly. Because our focus 
John does something, and you're like, oh wow, like I, I miss that. Yeah. Dad does something. I miss that. You know, and then all of a sudden you just grew a little bit because yeah. you're trying to search then within those parameters or parameters. Yeah, we, we have that constantly every day where uh, another artist has to go out and maybe find that uh, stimulus somewhere else, galleries, museums, books, whatever it might be. I don't know if we're talking. <laughs> Are we talking too much again? No, nope, no, nope, it's all good. But I want to open up to questions, and I'm not going to say a word now. So, does anyone want to ask a question? <laughs> Any? You can ask anything. We are. Yeah, we're not. We're not. We're trying. easy. Yeah. Sure. You guys talk a lot about what inspires you and how you find inspiration. How do you mix that with uh, kind of the discipline in your artwork? Like, how do you stay productive when, like, say, you hit a wall in your kind of inspiration? Do you, do you step away for a few days? Do you ever take a Week a month off, or how do you? I personally like to take breaks. My dad really likes to work through his things. I think. I think for me, I have a certain period of just. Um, well, I'm, I'm frustrated ninety percent of the time, but I think to work through that, you just have to begin. You have to make a mark. If you don't put anything down, you have nothing to, to react to. As soon as you put it down, I don't like it, I'll change it. Well, I'll change it again with making another mark. I'll change it again. So it's actually- You just start the work. You just have to start and then make your uh, judgment based on that um, initial start. And that, and that gets you into the fight. You know, it's a battleground that that's what it's about. You know, the, the artist has to just start the battle. And then you're in the fight, and uh, then you're you're fighting for your life. My best paintings are in my worst days because I'm willing to give up the precious things within that painting in order to make it better. And I learned that from both John and Danny have become really my teachers. They bring a certain enthusiasm, a certain uh, vision, a certain uh, courage. Uh, Art is it's all symbiotic, though. I mean, we all feed off each other. And as you see, like, there's so many works around. What's nice to have is multiple pieces going at one time. So you may learn something from one painting and apply it to the next. And so you pick up a painting that's laying over here that you weren't satisfied with. And all of a sudden, you're, you're applying what you were just doing to that painting. And and so those roadblocks, you know, you're able to take more chances, I think, you know, when you have all these things around. And um, so we you know, create a lot of work. We're very uh, prolific. prolific. I think too, a lot of times when you run into a problem with a pain, you don't throw it away, you just set it aside. And your subconscious is working on that problem you know if you ask yourself a good question your your subconscious will start looking for that even though you're you know you ever go down the street and you think i can't think of that name as something or whatever it might be and as soon as you try to not think about that answer all of a sudden you know uh, half an hour later that comes to you and i think your subconscious is always Shower, shower, shower syndrome. Yeah, just <laughs> you get your ideas when you relax. No, I mean. So, are you an artist? Uh, aspiring. Yes. Aspiring. aspiring. Yeah. And you have you have trouble um, sometimes. You, you have roadblocks. Uh, yeah, sometimes I can go for four hours straight. Sometimes you know, but I have definitely had the experience of where once you start, it's just. Comes, everything comes to you, you know, just having the first couple strokes of paint down. But I guess yeah. I it's yeah, yeah I can, and it's also like, like for myself, I get kind of manic about it. Like I, I need, I want to solve that problem. So the beauty with the abstraction is I'm able to not just use paint, but I, I can use other materials or objects and I could help solve those problems where um, I might feel more stymied if I just had to do paint, you know? So I, I think too, um, 
if you have not just so say we do a lot of figurative work but we do a lot of abstractions i do a lot of collaging you just do other things that stimulate you do that that open up new doorways yeah that's a good point and yeah. and that's a that's a big thing for me and but i think abstractions are huge like if you're a figurative painter to do abstractions you're gonna like open up a huge doorway because you can handle it any way you want to and there's no limit you have to learn to trust just your intuition. Just start something and, and let your intuition take over. Don't don't try to. The problem a lot of times with abstraction. Try it. Yeah, is people look at abstraction and they can't figure it out, so they they're afraid of it. And a lot of paintings don't have to be figured out. You don't have to have a story. You don't have to define an object. You, you just have to feel it. And a lot of people are afraid of that, that they just, the emotion moves them. They don't have to define it. And the problem a lot of times with that is they try then, initially it, it grabs them, I like it. And then they start to, to, uh, to define it. it. They try to judge it with too much. They say, well, what is it? I can't explain it to my neighbor. I can't, you know, so you, you ruin the painting at that time because you're too judgmental. I, I say just start something and trust your intuition. And it doesn't have to be right. It does, there's a lot of times an artist has to just have that space where he allows himself the freedom to experiment, to fall on your face, to realize that you get up. I know when I paint, if I stay with it long enough, scrape and paint it, set it aside, I can find the treasure within that painting. But I have to dig for it. A lot of them aren't on the surface. And a lot of times we have a sense that there's a certain time duration and if that painting isn't completed with that time, then it's not a, it's a bad painting. I don't see that at all. It's just that it hasn't had enough time to, I think to develop. One more thing. I think too, I like to look at a lot of like, people who experimented a lot with work, and that really opens up like a huge doorway yeah. for me. You know, it, it lets me take chances that I would never take yeah. because they already paved the road that I could kind of uh, be comfortable with it not being right. Yeah. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense or not. Exactly right. Yeah, I, I think that okay. too. I think there's another question there, Luis. I. I have a question, but before I ask the question, I just wanted to say to Dan that I started painting about 10, 12 years ago, later in life, and, um, and dove in, and it was with your book and the study of light in your book that gave me the confidence to begin to move forward to really start to paint. And I just, I want to say thank you because there is a saying that I have written down in my studio that I refer to a lot, and I hear you're still talking about it, and that relates to frustration. And that was what you said in the book, it was, there are no failed paintings, there is only failure to paint. And yeah. that has been my motivator, and I'm now moving from more representational work to abstract. And I'm finding exactly what you were talking about. Sometimes I'll look at it and say, what the heck is that? I put it aside and, and realize how much I actually learn from that <laughs> and can go back and do something else from there or stick, stick with the things. So thank you for what you have done for many people like yourself. I've studied in many workshops with uh, many of your contemporaries and find that I still come back to you and your their philosophy. And I think oh. that why your two sons are so prolific and as you are, is that you just carry on. And it's great. Thank you. Well, that's nice. That's really good. You know, I, I think women have the thing that we try to, I think, work on. And it's about intuition, it's about feeling, it's about our own, uh, our own um, trust in our own intuition, so. our own self. And I think women have a much keener sense of intuition. Men kind of need to define things. So more masculine. It's more masculine. It's more uh, aggressive. Yeah. 
And I, I think women have this beautiful, keen sense of intuition. And you see it in their work, abstract uh, work that uh, women do. I, I love abstract. I love, yeah, intuitive work. I, I just think that the later you start, you say eight years ago, it's about your experiences, about your- yeah, so much more to draw from now. Yeah, you, you have this whole, this whole uh, litany well, of uh, experiences to, uh, to draw from. And I, I think just trust yourself. You know, that's the I think about the trust too. It's like your 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 gut is there telling you something, but your mind hasn't really your brain hasn't caught up to it. And and it's great when all of a sudden your brain catches up to it and you're like, oh, this this is valid, this this has purpose, you know, and and uh it you know that some sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't, but it's a nice moment when it does, you know. I have two things I write in my sketchbook. It's quit thinking and trust yourself. Yeah. And that's kind of how I kind of go about Stop. it. Yeah. Trying to don't try to meet the expectations of somebody else. For sure. <laughs> um, those are the things it's a hard thing. You have to tell yourself, you know, the boundaries that we see are self-imposed. And I think we can break down those. Even now, I'm trying to break down those boundaries. I was schooled academically. You know, I, I was schooled by the Russian School of Art. I was schooled by the academic of, of uh, perspective and proportion and harmony. Traditional. The traditional um, regimen. John and Danny weren't. I can see the advantage they have, but still, I, I have a inclination to pull back to that and I have to really force myself to uh, to look past that and I'm glad that you know you have to satisfy yourself it has to be something that true north within you is where you, you're searching and we don't have a, 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 compass. a compass that tells us our true north we have to find it in how we feel our intuition it, this doesn't feel right I, I usually, when I, I taught for about 15 years at the Art Center College of Design, which is an extraordinary school in Los Angeles and really talented students I mean, who have over the years become a lot of my lifetime friends, but uh, they would come to me, these technically beautiful still artists and say, what, what's wrong with my painting? I'd say, you know, there's nothing of you in it. And, that was the big thing that uh, at some point we have to interject ourselves into it. We have to find a way. We have to, like John was saying, the idea, the thought, the imagination that we create, then that, tra that transition into that visual construct, the painting, that, that's, that's the, when the rubber hits the road, you know, we have to take our skills, our, um, our fears, all those things, when we start to approach the canvas. And I think most of all, trust if it isn't right, change it till it is right. And I think a lot of times when I was a younger artist, it was more about making it look like what was in front of me than, uh, than answering that thing within myself. It, and, but it's so hard to answer every question in a single painting or a single work, you know, it's like this constant balancing act. If, if if you're you know really strong on one side, there's going to be deficits on the other side. So it's it's trying. If you're trying to accomplish everything in one piece, it's so difficult. And you know, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think about. I think when I'm painting like that, I think I start in one direction, and then. If it isn't working, then a million other directions start to influence me. You know, I think, ah, oh, I should have done it this way. I should have, and it becomes very confusing for you. I think that, uh, but you know, trust, trusting your yeah. gut is huge. Yeah, and, and then and it's simplifying the problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. going back to the simplicity of, you know, we're I think we're all big on visual design, shapes and patterns more than rendering or creating. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, pictorial calendar piece. And not that there's anything bad with that. I see beautiful pieces, but it doesn't fit me at this time in my career. I want to express something about myself. And maybe my paintings are just portraits of myself. Maybe they're about validation. Maybe they're about waiting to be validated. And you can see, that's why. I, I, I validate you guys. <laughs> yeah. They're all frozen, waiting for somebody to uh, let them express who they are. So. Maybe that's been a, something within my life that my subconscious is working on. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I just feel lucky that I can come here and, uh, and do what we do and make a living at this thing and, uh, and talk to other people that maybe we can broaden their perception when they look at a piece of art, try to see more into it, maybe just to trust their own feelings when they look at something and say, that moves me. I don't have to define it. There doesn't have to be a story. But um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we do here every day. Other questions from the audience? Do you Alan, have... notice nobody's sitting in the front row. It reminds me of school. I would always sit in the back row. <laughs> I mean, close to the doors, I can see. Uh, I always don't have to sit in the front row, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you have a favorite piece here? Say that again, sir. He asked if you have a favorite piece in the show. Good. Yeah. I think I, I might have a couple. I think one is a piece with the green background on the figure. And it's one of my later pieces. And there's one with a couple figures sitting at a, a table, a kind of a uh, connection piece. Uh, I mean, you may not even see the table, but there's a lot of symbolism in, in both those pieces. You know, I use the chairs as not just chairs, but as one of the the um, desires for validation. Come and sit and tell me that I'm I'm all right, or whatever it might be. And there's all kind of hidden. Maybe there's symbols for you. I don't want to take the mystery out of each painting for you, uh, but those probably are two pieces that I. There, there's a piece of me in every single one that that has moved me at that particular time, and uh, I think those ones are 24, 30, or 30 by 24. It's kind of a higher key painting, two figures. At a, at, at a, in a situation. And, a, the, you know, I see landscapes and things around them, and that, that's also about more about what's internal, the textures, the things are about our internal textures, our internal fears, frustrations, desires, hopes. Uh, so it, it's all kind of, and I try to arrange those things in a, in a design that's impacting to me. I love shapes and patterns more than I do forms of rendering a form. I used to teach a head painting class and I don't even put faces on because I don't want to define, I don't want to define that painting by oh, it's a happy, sad, young girl, old girl. I just want to allow you to participate I said the other day to Alan, it's, it's like, uh, I saw a, a movie once called, I think it was called Doom. It was about, it was about a truck that was, uh, that, uh, on a, it was a salesman that was driving to Arizona on this lonely road, that had no kind of uh, exits. And this trucker was, Coming he out cut a trucker action. off. Yeah, he cut a trucker off and then it started. But you never saw the trucker. All you saw was like the, the shadow of the monster. And you filled in the monster better than, than I could depict the monster because your monster is your monster. And in a sense, that's what I'm doing with the pain. I'm, I'm giving you something. I'm giving you that shadow that you can interpret that 
that piece uh, to your own your own um, monster. <laughs> your own perception your own thinking so I don't that, and that's why they're mostly faceless I think mine is probably the one with the reflections it has the multiple figures at different levels it, um, it's more of a square piece in the next room it's like um, I love that piece I, I like that I just I, I had a new design I had new ideas and I always love new when I'm creating new stuff, and that's probably the newest of my works. So I was really excited about that one. But John, um, yeah, I I kind of gave her an array of what I do. So I mean, they each kind of hit me differently. And I like, like this blue one back here. I was telling Dad that. Yeah, I, no, I like that one too. It, it they all kind of take on a certain different significance so it's hard to choose which yeah i like the best but um love all your children <laughs> that, thank you <laughs> yeah any more questions <laughs> well uh, we, we thank you for uh, terry just said we thank you for your courage um, <laughs> You do put yourself out there every day. It shows in the work and it shows in the response that people have to that work. So we really appreciate that very, very much. Uh, the last question I had, when we received all the work, all 10 crates, um, <laughs> uh, what, what was amazing, and I was on the road, but both uh, Emma and Kim were saying, it's an integrated body of work that it looks like you even shared color palettes to go ahead and have a work that just blends so beautifully in the gallery. So was that intentional? I think it was. But if it, uh, if it wasn't, it just came off great. Yeah, I don't think it was intentional. I think that maybe, maybe we have our, our sensibilities are similar, you know, in terms of those things that, uh, in terms of maybe color or design, I think we share a common thread. Um, maybe our whole material is made up of a whole variety of, of different threads, but I think we have a lot of similarities that run through them. We influence each other. I think we, we share. We're literally, literally working like right with each other. So when, you, when you're walking through the studio and someone's doing something, it does influence you because it's around. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Certain color, like, seem to like carry through work, our works at certain times, and then, and then there's like a break away from that, and then it might gravitate towards yeah that direction. So I, I think we're all pretty much influenced by each other subconsciously, or yeah, yeah, or. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think you're so. Right. I think you're right. I, I think too. When we go see a, an exhibition or a museum, we might come back with some new ideas that we kind of try to maybe incorporate. But it's, it's uh, it, you know, I, being a painter allows us all those to constantly broaden our perceptions, uh, and I th I think. That's one of the values of art, that there's always a um, opportunity to expand your perceptions, your aesthetics. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think we, as artists too, we're, we're keen on like being observant, you know? So it's like, oh. You know, yeah, our this is how things are very aware of. Yeah, this is how they, oh, okay, well, hmm, you know, how can I incorporate that? Yeah. Or, what, what can I do to, you know, because I like that, you know, and how can I do it my way? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll walk through a city, you know, if we get out in New York or whatever, I and mean, then we see it everywhere, the things that excite us, uh, patterns, shapes, textures, uh, color, or what, whatever, it's, it's constantly there. I mean, I think that uh, people that aren't maybe have that broader perception of things 
pass by a lot of things that maybe an artist is sensitive to. And not that the average person can be also, it's just that you turn your perception in that direction. So we're- This is what we do every day. So yeah. you're very aware yeah. of those things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what we did. Yeah. We did. Sorry. I'm not sure if you're set up to do this, but one time we talked about maybe you showing us the studio. Is that something yeah. you're set up to do? Like, uh, I love the fact the way you paint uh, together. I don't know if uh, you could kind of point some things out in the studio itself, or is it too hard to move the camera? Yeah. yeah. I think we could do it. Let me, do you guys have your tetanus shots? <laughs> we won't take it to our bathroom. Yeah. Hold on. That's let me see if I can switch the camera here. Give me a second, guys. It's all good. So, let's see here. We're kind of, we're also empty right now. Uh, more than a, we sent out a bunch of paintings for two different. But here's, here's what they're seeing, Dad. Okay. So, um, let me actually do this really quick. Let me go like that so you can see what they're. So, this is, here, Dad. You, no, this is ahead. my side where I paint. Danny paints here. Our studio is. You uh, should go from the front. Uh, yeah, you're going to see the studio in uh, all different uh, stages of cleanliness. And uh, <laughs> uh, when they say that uh, cleanliness is next to godliness, we're uh, tapping on the gates of hell. Here. <laughs> so when we come in, the, I'm going to come out. So you're walking into the front door. Right, this is outside. Right here is the street. Um, if we still have connection here, that this is a um, just like gymnastic the center. <laughs> this is our building up here. So it goes up a ways. This is the other side. There's there's like uh, 19 restaurants right in walking distance here. I'll take you inside. So we, when we come in in the morning, I click the door, I open it up and I say, my God, this is a mess. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so uh, we, start to, <laughs> we start to go through here. Uh, this is still the Christmas decorations. Uh, <laughs> this is stacks of paintings in here. There's some more paintings on the walls. Look, look at all these right here. This these is are all things that are going to be stretched up. There you go. These are all decoration frames. This is all um, looking around here. I'll come through this. Uh, this is all here. This is still crates and frames and paintings that are, so we come through. Am I going too fast for you or are you okay? No, you're good. It's we like come into the bacon studio. He was on <laughs> steroids. So we come into here. This is our little setup here for, uh, you can see the, the space here. Well, um, the, the, this is my dog here. He's a, uh, Kevin, you turn on, should I turn on lights? Yeah, you can turn it. Doesn't... On the side of it. So these are some pieces that were in a, um, a show that uh, was at the uh, LA uh, Convention Center. It was the LA Art Show that they do here, a big show every year, and we we're part of that. And so you can see stacks of pieces still here, some being uh, in different. Some of Danny's work over here. Danny's work. Right here. Yeah, that green is a new color. Like it. So I paint on this side of the easel. My dad paints on this side, on the opposite. And then John paints in the back, or on the back easel. These are some of Danny's works over here. He just had a, a show in uh, Laguna Beach and uh, so he's got, kind of cleared out right now. he's kind of clear. We're usually pretty jammed with um, <laughs> stuff here. He's got to deliver a couple pieces out to Palm Springs that client bought these bigger pieces. Wow. 
Um, this is one that's going out here. It's kind of a cool piece. Um, you can see the palettes. These are, this is Danny's palettes, palette. More boards to be painted on there. Some more paintings. It's a piece he's working on now. Move around here. Where the outside. Uh, this is where, yeah, I paint over here. These are all pieces that were scheduled for that. The little orphan paintings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's all. We'll send you guys a few more boxes. <laughs> these are different. <laughs> yeah. these, are these, these are scheduled. I can't couldn't send them because they're going to another exhibition or or the uh, an online exhibition so we hold the art till we see what what they want so these are some experimental uh, things that i was working on black and whites uh, there's a bunch of those um there's more more paintings here larger larger paintings that's my dog again ocho can you say hello John works, show John works. And we go over here is where my easel is. We move around here. John's paintings are over here. And his easel is right here. My dad built all these easels. We built the easels and um, let me get back here. I can show a little bit more of uh, John's thing. So he's got quite a few pieces there. Uh, you can see around around here, John's space. Uh, some of these things are things uh, I'm gonna hopefully work on and paint. They're different ideas. Uh, here's our easel. Here we made them out of two by fours and that, but they, they really work well. Um, this is, uh, if I'm working on masonite, these are all pieces that are being worked on or, um, you, you know, they just are different stages of, I've been struggling like uh, today and yesterday uh, with a painting here I was trying to do and just frustration. But um, I love it. here's some more John's things here. It's a, Obviously a working studio, <laughs> there's yeah. a lot going on. There's John's palette, which is uh, pretty, messy. pretty uh, organized and clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he has one of the clean, no, Danny has the cleanest palette. <laughs> then I would say me and then, <laughs> then John. Definitely not John. <laughs> it's funny because John too is like, I think the very like yeah. organized and like, yeah. and like clean and meticulous, but like this is the yeah, art stuff. He's yeah. the most it's organized. A, it's a little, yeah. yeah, he's yeah, the no, most no. organized. He's a, where Danny's the most probably abstract uh, or not abstract, but maybe, uh, uh, what would you say? Well, maybe I won't say anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I use it for us to think of the monster ourselves. <laughs> oh, and this, John, this is where I make all the frames. John makes all the frames, crates, and crates, stretching canvas, and and we found a couple artists in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, these are my kids. They're... Oh, yeah. Hi. 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 <laughs> these are the next, this is the next generation of artists right here. We, we force them to clean the windows and scrub the floors. We start from the bottom up. And that's upstairs. We have a loft area upstairs. Um, Again, these are some frames in preparation. Um, this is our paint supply out here. This is a Russian painter. 
John, uh, we have a friend that has a really uh, beautiful, probably one of the best private uh, type museums and she hasn't opened it up yet, but it's a beautiful uh, building down here. Um, this is our, our paint supplies. This is John's, a lot of his framing material. You're seeing our studio at the worst. Uh, well, maybe not. We've had a worse than this. Uh, this, this is uh, sanding rooms and uh, another storage area back in there. Um, that's a fire extinguisher. It's not yeah. up to date. It's not showing people all this good stuff because my staff wants more room. <laughs> And then this is going to the back area. It's a punching bag. And uh, we work out on that from frustration. It's wonder it's uh, still uh, uh, working. This is where we wash our hands. <laughs> We're showing you everything. Um, this is going back to our big door that uh, we can uh, unload uh, paintings and FedEx pulls up. This here, if you can see, is another storage area that we have. My wife won't even come to the studio. She says it's <laughs> too filthy. <laughs> now, I don't know if I should show you upstairs, but it's. Uh, I think we're good. <laughs> you're good. All right. All right. I've been up there. We're good. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to. Uh... Actually, it's a really, it's really great substance. Yeah, it's a, it's a great space. And it is, it is. And, uh, it, it is a working studio. We are yeah. working. <laughs> well, Terry well, reminded me that your grandchildren are there. And it's, uh, although it's a couple hours different, it's only six o'clock your time. We've been at this an hour. I really want to thank you for taking the time and sharing both your process, your, your studio, the work you do, certainly your art. And now we even see uh, the next generation of future really bad artists that are hopefully be groomed and come to the gallery. So we're excited by that. Well, so you know, uh, I, you like. uh, we saw that. <laughs> we'll that here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Appreciate all your your input and your attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess uh, uh, again, I, I do want to thank you guys. Uh, uh, also, I, I, I would be remiss without saying thank you again to the staff here. Yeah. Um, and most importantly, thank you for everyone who's been a patron of the arts. Um, this gallery doesn't exist without you know people supporting that. So thank you guys for coming here. And yeah. well, to getting a chance to meet with us. Appreciate everything. And if you guys get out to LA, come by. Uh, that's in the plan. It is. Well, thank you again. Thank you guys. <laughs>